out for you and we're successful on your end. Yeah. All right. I don't have my second uh, screen pulled up today. So what's going on guys? It's K-Dub here. That, today I have Crypto you, Candor, Altcoin Sarah, and of course Crypto Rose. All right. On I don't have my second uh, screen stream, pulled up today. So earlier than usual, what's going on guys? K time. We had, we had to make do with what we had. So how's it going everybody? Pretty good. 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 Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So I, I can't see it. Can you guys hear us on our end? Are we live? I, I can't see on my end right now because I only have one screen pulled I up. I am live on my end and I don't know if how my sound uh, is <clears throat> though. I think I'm live as well from what I can see. Is it showing right, that cool. your, your stream health is green? Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Can everybody hear us? Everybody can hear everybody. First time doing this UK, New York. <laughs> what up? It's like cool. the, the, Let's go. the battle across the pond. Awesome. Awesome. So um, we have a lot of different people on my channel. Crypto Candor, I mean, you're more than welcome to introduce yourself. You're on here quite frequently. I do enjoy your, your company. Um, and for the rest of you, uh, Sarah and, and uh, you know, Ro uh, Rhoda, would you like to kind of introduce yourselves a little bit? Yeah, sure. Um, so hi, everyone. I'm Sarah from All Queen Bus Ladies um, on Twitter, All Queen Sarah and any other social media. A recording from Birmingham. Everyone thinks England's only got one city and that's London. Not from London, <laughs> but um, yeah. So we've been investing into crypto for almost a year now, and that's me, in a quick nutshell. Cool. Hi everyone, I'm Rhoda. I'm in the space. I'm known as Crypto Roads, but um, I'm pretty new to the scene. Uh, only entered the space maybe a few months ago, although I've had an awareness of, of it, like most people, for several years now. I mean, my partner has been dabbling in it for for years. Um, I've been kind of having it in the background, sort of ignoring it in a way, not really paying any attention. And it was only really this year that I really started paying attention when, um, or when I was kind of in a low place. I'd just had another baby and was feeling a bit helpless about a lot of things happening in the world and my personal life. And uh, my partner really helped me through. He really actually sat me down and broke, broke everything down to me and made me see that it's, not just all about Bitcoin. He said, look, this because I was really pissed off one day about Facebook, the whole the whole thing, yeah. the data misuse mm -hmm. thing. And he showed me um that social media is changing as well. It's moving on to the blockchain. And he showed me all these, uh, you know, I joined Steam, Steam it, sorry, and um applied to be an alpha tester for how do I downloaded lit and I think I pretty much got open up into the this new world. I was like, well, what is happening? It came um, out of the gate quick. Yeah. Ha have you yeah. actually, have you actually, uh, you've tested how to? Have you tried yeah, it? As an alpha tester, but as from what I understand, that's not what the platform's gonna be like. It's um, just to, to test things like reaction times and stuff like that. So hmm. yeah, it was, it was all about finding issues and things that needed to be reported. But so I, I don't actually know what the, plat the actual platform's gonna be like. To be honest with you, yeah, but um, yeah, it's that was my entry point, social media, <laughs> and as a mother, um, I'm in London, by the way, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> um, as a mother of two very young children, I, I became quickly aware that this this new sort of technology is going to be what my kids are going to be growing up in, like much like the internet was for us. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So I've become acutely aware of how this is going to affect them and I I wanted I didn't want to be disconnected from that and um, like the way my parents are with the internet now you know oh. I'm still helping my mom and dad send emails and stuff you know what I mean <laughs> so I really wanted to be a part of that and understand it as much as possible even though I don't <laughs> I really struggle with a lot of the tech stuff and the investments sort of talk but my partner really helped me with that I mean He's, he's been a trader for, for a few years as well in the traditional market. So I think I kind of leave all that to him. Yeah, yeah. These are like traditional markets on steroids though, but it's <laughs> it, it's kind of similar. It's, it can be tough and you know, it's all right. As far as the tech goes, yeah, just take your time day by day. I mean, yeah. I didn't learn everything in a day and I'm, I still learn. There's still things that confuse the oh, hell yeah. out of me. So absolutely. But that's cool. I mean, you're, you're the way you're seeing it as um, wanting to get involved and understand it now because you're going to have kids who are growing up in it. I don't yeah. have kids, so I haven't thought of that in context, but that's your, I mean, you're spot on. That's the truth. So that's pretty cool that you're kind of trying to make yourself a little bit more involved and just educated so that when it does become more commonplace that you won't be kind of left in the dark. Exactly. Yeah. 
I'm just enthusiastic about the space. I think it's um, yeah. I think we all are. So much. Yeah. So I had a question for you, since now we're talking to people from the UK, which, you know, Candor and I are from New York, so we have a very specific viewpoint on things, you know, US citizens and all that. What is it like in the UK? How do you, what, is, what are your, like, what is your government stance on it? How does, how does, how does your country kind of look at it and view it? Huh, well, um, I went to recently to a conference as Oakland Bus Ladies representative, and I thought it would be quite cool to see because I haven't been to one for blockchain related stuff. And it was more of a really beginner. There was a lot of people who were in a pre ICO phase, just thinking of creating projects rather than being invested in themselves. There was one conference and let's say there was a hundred people and maybe actually 15 of them owned any crypto so i thought i was a bit weird um but i guess it was just sort of a, a conference that i went to um some blockchain show uh, but i think the uk is really pro it from what i've seen in the news they really like blockchain they're trying to implement it into as much ways as they can it's quite a liberal country over here so it's my take on it what okay. are your um are you guys allowed to participate in the majority of ICOs? I mean, if you've, yeah, 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 yeah. That's, yes. I'm very envious or we probably are both very envious because in the United States, we are basically can't yeah. do anything. So <laughs> I mean, right now it might be a godsend because none of these ICOs are doing well. So on in that, in yeah. that hand, I think now it worked in our favor, but last year when yeah. they were just absolutely smashing it, I'm mm. so jealous. Yeah, yeah. Not great, but I mean, like Coinbase recently added, um, the possibility to exchange your funds back into pounds straight into where previously you had to do it to pretty sure you had to do it to euros and then you had to bring it some other platform to actually withdraw funds from crypto to fiat so that i think just shows that even if coinbase getting involved in it that uk is becoming a big player in the scene yeah i mean in the local one of my local grocery stores there's a billboard outside an electric one and it says you can advertise here pay, by paying with bitcoin ethereum or litecoin and a, a shop like a corner shop a little further up the road from me has an, a, a crypto like cash machine thing atm that's so yeah, cool yeah yeah i've seen those pop up um in a lot of like asian countries where people will like they're on vacation and they'll post it on like reddit i've seen that the ATMs. I haven't seen any in the United States, obviously, but uh, <laughs> I know they exist. Yeah, it's I have, weird. I've literally bypassed everyone. There's one, this shop. The most, the least shop I would expect to sell Bitcoin actually have it. Exactly. And yeah, same. The machines are just weird looking things. I don't know. I haven't experienced it yet because I know the fees that they take are just enormous. For oh, yeah. I mean, there's got to be an incentive, right? There, it's probably a liability, oh, yeah. um, a liability for them to to create them and get licensed to have them out there and get them regulated or whatever. So they're going to have to try to oh, make yeah. money in some capacity. Absolutely. So what do you guys, uh, I mean, as far as this crazy dip, so, I mean, I know Rhoda, you just got into it recently. So what do you, what do you think of this? Like, I mean, so many people got involved in this, you know, December, January time. And now with everything that's going on in the markets, what do you think? I mean, how do you feel about it? Well, I'm new to this space. So I actually entered the space in a, in a bear run i suppose um <laughs> but um, just from what i've seen in it's, i know it's not the same as the traditional markets because it's a lot more volatile but from what i've seen with my partner's work it's all swings and roundabouts it, it's always up and down up and down isn't it so uh i know how the news can affect like geopolitical tensions and everything can affect the traditional markets and with this particular market um the the current news can it seems to, especially with the sex stuff that's happening, not sec, SEC stuff. Oh, I thought, I thought maybe you were going to talk about like, <laughs> I mean, I did Puma, not Puma know a that. partner with Puma Pay, so I mean, technically you're not that off. I mean, they did have a partnership. So I've lost my train of thought now. <laughs> well, it's okay. I mean, yeah, I, well, a lot of things that they're talking about right now, for example, the big thing is the whole ETF situation. And, you know, I read yeah. an article this morning that they were saying they're thinking that it might not get approved because of the crazy manipulation. I mean, we saw what happened with BitMEX when they shut down and it just instantly spiked up. And then as soon as it came back, it instantly went back down again. So, I mean, what's your stance mm -hmm. on it? Do you even think that we need an ETF or what is your opinion on it as far as like, what do you think even in general is going to help bring people into this space? That we need uh, I'm not sure about the ETF thing because I'm kind of split because I, I understand that um, it will 
bring other people into this space. Um, and I know the whole thing about the space is meant to be about decentralization. So yeah. my, I'm split too. Uh, I kind of think that, our, that society kind of needs centralization in a way. But I, I read an article earlier that and Andreas Antonopoulos was saying that he thinks it's a bad idea in, because of the manipulation that it's going to create. So I think what the project should focus more is an actual innovation and working products and proving that they can deliver instead of focusing on ETFs and what the governments will do, because they, they'll have to sort something out because it's such a volatile market. But the fact that we need working products doesn't change the fact that they need to keep on working and improving their own projects because there's so many assets without working projects that people invested a lot of money in and it's time to show if it actually works i think mm -hmm. do you guys have ethos does it work for you can you uh do you have a fiat trading in and out where you are sorry do you guys have for ethos can you use the fiat uh ramp in and out in the in the uk the gateway yeah i i didn't even know that they had the gateway up and running yet Oh, it's not? Okay, no, I didn't I know. Think, I, I, the only reason I know this is because I just did that damn video, but they um, that's like they just partnered with somebody to set up the gateway, but it's not currently active, um, but it is coming up. I think like it's pretty close on the roadmap as far as priorities for them. Um, and I'm sure like if they're already allowing, if they're liberal with ICOs and other things, the gateway is probably going to be accessible for you guys. But um, as far as the ETF goes, I guess my view is very similar to Rhoda's like, it's good in a sense that some centralization will bring in like older people who are maybe more skeptical of the space and don't feel comfortable investing. But in the same light, you know, I agree with Sarah and, and that we should be focused on projects that are actually doing mm -hmm. what they say they're going to do because eventually the government and everybody else is going to just have to figure it out and follow suit and accept it or not mm -hmm. and find a way to regulate it or not. And I think it's hard to, to put this space in a box and say, okay, we need an ETF. We need, you know, SEC re regulations when, this is the first time this space has ever been in existence and forcing other regulations that fit other things onto this may not be the best way to go about it, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. yeah, I don't know. I just think that this is kind of its own beast and it needs to kind of grow and become its own thing before we start to try to, you know, make it into something else, I guess. It's ironic. Yeah, speaking because... of ethos, they just, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. I talk all day on this channel. Go ahead. Um... <laughs> Ethos just dropped a minute ago. If anyone's still interested. So. Oh, did they really? If I'm you... gonna go check that out because yeah. I, I have the. I'm getting the airdrops myself. <laughs> oh, yeah. somebody I'm asked like... real quick. Um, um, Rhoda, you said you had a Lit app. People want to know how they can follow you on Lit. What's your uh, username? Oh, she froze. Oh no, she's frozen. Oh, there she Whatever. is. Uh, uh, okay, I'm Crypto Roads. I'm Crypto Roads on all of the on all of the um, social media sites. With but, the zero, uh, the zero as the O. Yeah. Okay. But um, I have to admit, I downloaded the Lit app, but I haven't used it much. Sorry, guys, um, because it's more of a stories platform, and I'm not. That's not really me. I didn't. I I had a look around, but I'm not really one of those people that likes to upload stories. So yeah. sorry, <laughs> you'll find me, but you won't find much. <laughs> so I wanted to ask you, uh, Rhoda, real quick, just because you're you are extremely new to the space, which is why I wanted to have you on the channel. Because I, I mean, you've only been, you only have a couple videos up, and I found your content to be really good right off right out the gate. Oh, thank so you. I wanted I wanted to ask you, is this like what are you doing? Because I know you, you you are you still doing acting as well? Because you also do white papers. You you read white papers. Yeah, do you want to explain what that's all about? Yeah. Yeah. So when I entered the space, because I knew pretty much nothing. Um, I the first white paper I tried to read was Bitcoin. That was the one that my partner in, told me to read. He said, "Well, if you're going to read one, might might as well start with the one." Um, and because I've got two very young kids, one of them's three, and the other one was just a baby at the time. Well, he's still a baby now. Um, I actually listened to an audio version of it online, and um, I found that easier while I had the kids. I could just you know listen to it as I did stuff, and um, I thought that that was a really good way for me to to learn. Like, why not um, do audio recordings of these white papers? So my partner, who was who's very supportive of this, he said, rather than telling me which one to to record, he said, well, why don't you look around and pick one? 
So the first one I recorded was Eden Chain. That was really technical. I kind of regretted it straight away. I was like, oh, it took me ages. But um, I some of them are like fifty percent mathematics. So like, how do you go around that? You just skip it. I don't. Um, well, I I googled a lot to see how to how to say 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 like you know pronounce the formulas or however. But um, if they were, I, if I got really stuck, I'd say, please refer to equation on page ten. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I still I, I'm still acting. Uh, I took a few years out just because I had I had to focus on being a mum, and they uh, I just needed to have a break because the last job I did, the last proper job I did, was filmed in Belgium, and I was back and forth, and it really it really killed me being away from my son. And now I've got a second son. I just um, I've, I've really like taken um, taken my time to be with my kids. So it's I important. Can't even imagine. Yeah, John, but I mean, crypto I know. and kids. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But um, I did tell my agent, like, obviously, if Star Wars are, are knocking on the door, I won't say no to an audition. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, I'm slowly, slowly going back to to work now. Um, so good it's, for it's you. Be in, yeah, so, it's going to um, be interesting. <laughs> Not to cut everybody off, but on my side, since you're a lot of new faces on the channel, they're interested in uh, what projects do you like? What what, what projects are you questions. looking at? So um, do you guys want to kind of, I mean, everybody knows on my channel the things I like, but what are you guys really looking at right now? What's Are you buying anything on the dip? Are you waiting? Or what? Or, or just fundamentally, what do you like? I'm a massive fan of Neo. Yeah. It's one of the first projects I invested in, and it's just, it's just close to my heart for that reason. I'm also extremely bullish on VeChain. If you follow me, you know about how crazy I am with VeChain. And um, I'll think of the third one once Rhoda says, because I'd want to yeah. make it a good pick now. VeChain had a 100% increase oh, in yeah. a week. So kudos to anyone holding that, seriously. Mm. Oh, I, I, Cardano. Yes. Oh, Cardano. Nice. Yeah. We got two Cardanos on here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I'm right there with you. I, uh, um, yeah, I've kind of made a. I think everybody sort of knows that, like, the way you know, Kdub likes Neo um, is the way I like Cardano and that whole. Well, I, I saw, I saw you, um, your review. It was one of the. First, uh, oh no, Toskinson. Oh yeah, yeah you, um, cut out, so, you cut out. You cut out a little bit. Which would you say? Oh yeah, I was saying to Kanda that um, I saw her review. And um, her interview with Charles Hoskinson it was one of the first things that I saw. I know. How the hell did she space, get that? So it's really great. Great, great stuff. Man. So when I was super so, impressed. Thank you. I was um, petrified the entire time, and actually, uh, uh, Charles had set up the Google Hangouts so that we could stream, and that was the only time I had ever used Google Hangouts, and I didn't know that like he needed to change the setting on his side, so it only streamed him the whole time, which was ended up being a blessing because it was a two-hour interview, and I was like. Like I was probably shaking through most of it because I was just so nervous. Cause I went from like making little videos in my kitchen to all of a sudden live streaming with Charles Hoskinson. I'm like, I don't, I think I'm in the wrong place. Like, are you sure you asked the right person? So yeah, no, it was, it was cool. Um, you know, kind of to speak to what you said about being new in the space and not feeling, you know, feeling like there's so much more you don't know. You, you may always feel like that. Cause I've been in here doing this for a year and a half now and I still find that there's so much that I still need to learn or still need to really understand, or there's always more information, which is also kind of the cool thing about it is that there's always something to research and learn more about. Mm -hmm. it. Yeah, definitely. The, the more you go into it, the more you realize that it's crazy. And at first I used to get really obsessed with the tech and I still am, but now I kind of agree with Sarah that I think Sarah, I need to, um, Sorry, she she had a thing about earlier before we got on. You have to pronounce it a certain way, so it's it's Sarah, right? Yes, Sarah, Sarah. I don't know. It's my New York accent. I guess I say it wrong. I know I say it but, wrong um, too. <laughs> but yeah, when it went, I, you know what? I I forgot train, my train of thought. Anyway, but what I was gonna say was for for me personally, as you get deeper into the tech, you start to realize that eventually you do need that adoption, and you need it to be something where you you know I always like to go back to what Steve Jobs said, where it's about the why. You know, it's not the what, like you can try to sell people tech all day, but if it doesn't make their life easier, if it's not more convenient for mm -hmm. them, if it's not something that's mm -hmm. applicable, you know, it's really difficult to convince someone to just switch over to something that they're not used to just because of like, oh, one time there was a privacy breach, you know, it has to be more than just that. And I think that that's the, that's where we're at right now. And I'm, I'm it's a gamble and it's more or less, for example, you said Cardano, 
and they're one of those scholar types where everything has to kind of get peer reviewed, everything has to get, so it, it takes time. And I think with crypto, we expected that the tech was gonna move as fast as the price was back in December. And then mm -hmm. when it didn't, everybody got super depressed. So mm -hmm. I don't know, it sucks. But unfortunately, you know, you look at companies like the ones that are the big ones now, everybody talks about Amazon, Facebook, Google, they didn't become, you know, Neo's only been around for, you know, not, I don't know when they first did their ICO, but you know, I know Elastos, they just had their anniversary uh, yesterday. It's one year. And everyone's like, oh, well, what, what do you expect? It's been one year, guys, yeah, you know? I know. So, yeah. One year is nothing. No, absolutely <laughs> it's not. It's not, especially considering the kind of uh, disruptive technology. We're trying to, like, rebuild mm -hmm. everything that we've been using for mm -hmm. the last, like, 50 or 60 years. And it's just pretty, pretty unbelievable to think that people can be so impulsive about kind of how they feel about projects and why they're taking so long. And, I, I mean, I've done it, too. I can't, you know, pretend that I'm, I'm – better in the process of having patience but um it's you know it's important to remember again that this is this is so so early on in this space um you know and that's the cool part about it is we're all early adopters whether or not you started yesterday or today or you started two three years ago you know we've got a we got a long time of growth before this becomes mainstream absolutely exactly, yeah. a lot of questions on my end about eos do you have any opinions on them i know i, I know that i just start the the war on the but do you guys what do you think <laughs> Well, considering how much money they managed to raise and how it all started off, I'm a bit disappointed, to be fair. Yeah. But that's just my opinion. It's tough. I mean, because, like, here's the thing. So you, you've had a project like Tron, right, which not they didn't have a, the ICO. But a lot of people were saying that Tron got hyped up out of nowhere. It was, you know, vaporware. They had nothing, right? But the thing is, is that Tron actually, in a weird way, they – they, they had a super high market cap, right? There was so much uh, FOMO into it. And then Justin Sun actually started utilizing some of that money to start developing the Tron virtual machine, the stuff. So like in a sense, it's like you hear people say like, oh, I hate these guys that like they just pump their coins for no reason. But then on the other hand, it's like I like the guys that just put their head down and do the tech. But as long as they're like utilizing it and being smart with it, like I think mm -hmm. Tron actually, like when, when I'm not gonna lie, when Tron first came out, I, I was the first, I laughed at it. I was just like, yeah, okay, whatever. But now that I see how serious they are and they're actually using their funds, they've acquired BitTorrent, you know, they have Tron chat that just came out. Then they're doing that thing with uh, Seed It now. They're Seed doing it. Yeah. So, I mean, that to me, that's, those are things people can use. I mean, down, you know, get Seed It, go on um, Twitter and, and send a tip. Anyone could do that. You know, and, and, and that's the adoption that I think that's really going to help push it forward. Not, you know, okay, get your 12 password seed phrase, download your mnemonic, this, put it on a hardware, then transfer here. I mean, most people are just used to going to the bank. You know, now I got to do 12 more steps to get my money. You know what I mean? It's like crazy. Yeah. Well, that's like the thing that I always, I feel like I say this in like every stream because someone always asks like, what's your thought on, um, you know, the, the, the space growing and how is it going to being start being used by people? And um, it's always, my response is always, it, we have to be using it in a way that people don't realize that they're using blockchain tech. Yeah, It has to be seamlessly, effortlessly. You open up your phone, you use an app and the app works and it just happens to be a blockchain based project. So and like, I mean, like lit, yeah, for yeah, example, that's like just lit, like or, an Instagram. Or even yeah. like the, the EOS or the ethos wallet, being able to open it up, buy crypto, do atomic swaps on the platform keep it all there, you know, invest in other things like that to me is like a much easier use case than going on uh, Coinbase and buying it and sending it to Binance and buying it and then sending it to the wallet on your computer. Like it's, it, we have to Long decrease process. steps. Yeah. It's a huge process and it's intimidating. Mm -hmm. I mean, the first time I ever sent a, a, a transaction on like the Ethereum network, like what is this address? Like the, the average person's not going to feel comfortable dealing with stuff like that, you know? Yeah. Do you guys and like check? four times the address before you actually send the funds or is it just me panicking that you're going to send it somewhere else? Or yeah, something? That, uh, that happened the, the, uh, to me the other day. Um, I, I did it for the first time and um, I was so nervous because if it if it went to the wrong address, then it's completely my fault. Oh, yeah, there's nothing mm -hmm. you can do about it. My, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, totally. I do the same yeah, thing. Yeah, that's the thing is like now you actually are your own bank. So mm -hmm. the responsibility is on you. I've seen a few of these different projects. For example, Byteball, they recently came out with mm -hmm. addresses now where you can you can buy you can buy one for um it's really cheap. It's like I think maybe 40 bucks or something in, in Byte, and you just get at. So you could actually have like at crypto roads. Yeah. You know, you still you still have your private key on it for yourself, but like your public address and stuff, you can just tell somebody like, oh, just send it to 
at crypto roads and then it'll yeah. redirect it to your address so it's yeah. those types of things that make it easier you know most people don't want to carry around a 57 letter number digit copy paste you know and then you have that then then if you're if you do have to copy and paste it, you got it in your phone maybe somebody copies it steals it right or something like that so you can actually absolutely. do that on um my ether wallet you can buy like that yeah Ethereum i was gonna say sort of thing. Thing. Oh, you can? yeah yeah so it, it would be like mm. you know the crypto zombie so in full disclosure i tried to buy crypto and i couldn't figure out how to do it because there's like a three-day waiting period and then you have to wait and then you have to like bid on it and i kept trying I did it like three or four times and I couldn't figure it out. So um, either I don't know what I'm doing or it's just difficult, but it wasn't, it was, it was a pain to try to get uh, the name and I thought that would be cool. Oh, okay. Well then I'll just have my name.eth. But there are some services that do like the name instead of, um, instead of like the long address. Yeah. I've seen a lot of projects uh, doing that, even like uh, Komodo, you know, I was speaking to the team. I'm actually trying to get an interview with JL777. He's a, uh, the anonymous so i have to do it through discord and ask me through text only um so i'm probably gonna do that like next week but even these guys are like yeah you know we kind of need a brand refresh we need to you know because even like the user uh the uxs the uis whatever you want to call them like they're trying to make the experience easier and you know it's like well it works but it's difficult and they need it to be more like one push button type thing you know like what we're familiar mm. with now and i'm actually seeing a lot of projects realize that and i actually wouldn't be surprised if the remainder of this year we see projects really pushing like user experience user interface because i think they like have the hint now so i think that's something they're definitely going to be doing moving forward absolutely um what else did i i had a question uh you know what I was gonna ask you? Oh, I had a question actually because this is the first time I've ever done it. In, uh, like, a, like all girls. Okay, so I get this thing on on my videos because I always start off with like, "What's going on, guys? It's K Dub here." And like every couple of days, I always get somebody like, "Stop saying guys. There's girls here too." Does, are you offended by that as 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 women? Does that bother you? Because like, if you look in the dictionary definition, like the the first definition is men, and the second definition is a group of people collectively does not have to be. I always different. thought it was like a neutral yeah. term. I say guys, yeah. or I call people guys or bro or dude, or and like I say that to like my female friends. Mm. So I mean, yeah. I may not be the best person to ask, but I don't, I don't think so. I don't. I'm not. I, my intro is "Hey guys, it's Sarah from All Combust Ladies." So <laughs> no, I'm not oh. offended. <laughs> Okay, good, because I'm going to definitely point that out, and I'm going to reference this, because the next time somebody says this, I'm going to be like, watch the video, they don't care. Yeah, just, so. just like do like the link in your description like to this moment in the video, be like, yeah, see, see, I asked, I'm good. <laughs> one, one of the reasons, though, that I really wanted to get all of you guys on the channel is because, <laughs> well, not just because, you know, a lot of people in the chat are making, you know, comments about that it's all females, but really, I like that you, you, you do in, informational, educational content on your channels, and I think that there needs to be more of that in the space. Like, I love to do top tens. I do them sometimes, you know, and yeah, I interview projects, and sometimes you get a little hypey, and I do news, but education, you know, like, what good is, like, I do news, great, but what good is my channel going to do to somebody who just came in? Great, the news. How do I use it? How do I get involved? You know, so I really do appreciate that. And I think it's important. And I think that that's what the space is missing, in my opinion. So I wanted to say thank you for what you are doing uh, for helping everyone. Oh. Mm. Oh. No, it's important. Um, I mean, I actually, I wrote, I watched your video where you like kind of thanked Kyle or, or whatever for, um, yeah. yeah, his like shout out. And it reminded me of the reason I started my channel, which was when I got into the space, there just wasn't a lot of entry level content. It was either like um, you're reading articles about like, what is Ethereum? Or you're watching like a seven minute video where someone breaks down the tech or talks about the news. And it was really hard to find content that was like, okay, speak to me like an adult, but also, you know, make it so that it's digestible. And that's what I wanted to do. Uh, and so it's cool to see other people doing that too, because I really think that there's a need for education. I mean, Education is the whole space anyways, but education in a sense, it's like, like perfect example, the Charles Hoskinson interview, he was, he's brilliant, but he's brilliant in a way that sometimes it doesn't translate. So we need people to translate that and make it easy for the average person. Um, so I think it's, that's very important. Definitely. Yeah, like absolutely. On my own example, I found that long videos don't speak to me. So the way I try to do mine is unless it's a live stream, I try to keep on like, until like, below 10 minutes so i can keep the people interested but also i know i wouldn't bore myself if i had to listen to it mm. because if you go into too much detail people just lose the interest or it just gets too complicated for it to just listen without asking the questions so i think as long as we keep it short people will be more interested to 
expand their knowledge about different projects and that that's my strategy for mm. bringing all the projects to people yeah, yeah i i try to to explain it to someone like me if i can understand it then mm. i'm sure you can yeah <laughs> so I, I, yeah but that's um, that's, uh, that's like um nathan from crypto knots he always goes um i try to do it as if i'm explaining it to a 12 year old yeah that's what he says yeah that's well that's why way. like a lot of times yeah. like especially in my older videos when I first got started, if I don't understand what the word is, I'll stop and define it in the video. Be like, okay, so I just use this term and this word means whatever because, um, I don't know, because sometimes you don't want to stop the video and go figure out what it means. It's just easier if people kind of break it all down. So yeah, 12-year-old 12, 12 is definitely a good uh, age to, to try to lecture too. <laughs> Yeah, and, and another thing too, when you think about it, you know, you've looked at all these. Um, you kind of got, got my mind was wandering thinking about um, the educational aspect of it, and even just the simple fact that people don't truly understand. Like even like I, I use my dad for example. He really thinks that Bitcoin goes inside of a wallet, and and really in reality, the 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 bitcoins, the crypto, they're on the blockchain. Mm -hmm. Your private keys are essentially like a door that lets you into the blockchain, you know? So he's like, oh, what if I lose my wallet? It's like, I mean, unless you lose the actual keys, like the numbers, but then people leave it on the exchanges and exchange get hacked, right? So we had the big Mt. Gox. I don't know if you uh, recently saw that mm -hmm. the trustee came out and now people are trying to come back into, you know, baby, basically you can claim what you lost, but now people are pissed off because here's the issue. They're trying to pay them back in the cash amount that it was worth when it got hacked. And they're pissed off because they're like, yeah, but that Bitcoin has like, 10x or 15 20x since that mm. i don't know the exact numbers so they're trying to get paid out it's like when bitconnect paid everybody out in bcc yeah 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 and they're exactly. like well, what the hell are we going to do with this like what are, there's no it's not even a token that has a use case yeah. so those are things also you know you have to let new people because i think that they get a lot of scams i saw with the the bitconnect leader that got taken down and then there was a post in india totally misconstrued the information and they were reporting in india headlines that satoshi nakamoto had been arrested and he was in jail and finally the bitcoin ponzi had been taken down and it's just like you know that they're not related at all right and and, and it's that misinformation that i don't want the public being afraid to get involved because that's going to turn everybody off and that's not the case i mean it's like it's like airplanes you know like people are afraid to fly but how often do planes actually crash you know what i'm saying like maybe that was a good example i don't know but yeah no, I mean, I, I think we get Rambling. your point, though. But I mean, yeah, it's uh, it is scary to to come in the space and not realize, like, or, or just be kind of not gullible, but just unaware. Oh, well, this says it's going to make me, you know, X amount of returns, and all I have to do is like send it some ether or send it some Bitcoin. You know, the average person doesn't really know that that's a lie, especially if you're not around it. Um, and right. you know, I always said the reason those Twitter ETH scams still exist and they're still doing it is because they must be making money still. I mean. If it wasn't yeah. lucrative, mm. they would have stopped at this point. So there's definitely still people True. that need the education and the assistance. Did you see Elon Musk? Uh, Elon Musk, I was going to say, he, he yeah. got hacked. His Twitter got hacked. Did he it? really? Yeah. Oh, did it? That's what I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> uh, his first tweet about actually crypto was how amazed he was about the Ethereum bots and how they work and how Twitter can actually go around it that it blows my mind that Twitter has got so many employees and they can't go over Ethereum bots. Mm. I don't know if it's just me, but it's, it's really annoying. It goes beyond that. Those. It goes beyond that too, Sarah, because even just like I try to do polls for like vote for your next, I'll let the community vote. What do you want for my mm -hmm. next video review, right? And I've seen yeah. my own my own polls get manipulated by bots. Really? Like, I, like I'll have four and like one will clearly be losing. And then all of a sudden, like 15 minutes before it's done, it'll just get like 150 views out of nowhere. Like the whole Binance thing. I mean, are these, how do you even do these? I think that's the other, the other thing with the blockchain too, is like being able to do voting and things like that. Because look at these centralized systems, how easy they are to manipulate. You can't even trust polls. You know, it's just, I don't know. Well, ClearPoll is actually um, supposed to be putting out their initial like alpha platform, I guess. And I'm, I'm interested into looking into that because I think that is really, really cool. And I would love to see um, polling or any sort of like governmental aspect in that way to, to be taken on by the blockchain. Because uh, mm. I think with the U.S. and the whole election this past or two years ago now, whatever, um, we could benefit from some transparency in our polling systems, I think. Mm. I think it's just Florida. I think as long as Florida doesn't get a right to vote, no offense to everybody in Florida, but it seems to always be some confusion down south. I don't know what yeah. it is with your voting machines, but 
<laughs> it's not just you guys. It was Brexit as well for yeah, us. That's true. Oh yeah, talk about yeah. Brexit. Can you guys for a second give us a little in information because that's huge, right? It's a big deal. I actually, so. I actually made a video about Brexit and how it's going to influence the crypto. So if you want to check it out, obviously everyone, you can do it. But basically, it's um, there's going to be some significant changes in the government and with the taxes. I'm not really too good with taxes. My mom is an accountant, so she usually does it. Uh, but there's going to be big implementations that I think people involved with the crypto actually need to get their heart, head around it. It's not just that the economy is going to be down. And I'm obviously against Brexit because I'm not English, as you know, Kyle, I'm not English. Uh, so right, I'm also on. worried about what I'm... Don't say it. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. All right. Okay. It's, it's out now. Um, but yeah, I'm also worried about like my job and stuff. So it's not just an implementation of the crypto, but people actually need to realize that it's going to get difficult. I think people don't actually realize it. But I don't really want to talk too much about Brexit. Okay. Yeah. We don't have to. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to no, make anybody... it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. I, I personally didn't really I'm know much about it because it kind of didn't really affect me. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I, I know that sounds kind of messed up. Plus it's like trying to get involved in anything that's not crypto related for me is like, I, I go out in the real world. <laughs> And some, somebody will be like, hey, did you see what happened with Trump? And I'm just like, no. And they're like, oh, well, he's our president, and it's really important. I'm like, I don't, I don't watch the news. I, yeah, I, I literally see. just do crypto. I don't He's our president don't for a short period world. of time. I watch all the crypto news, but no telling news. They're just boring. They're just all the same stuff. Well, crypto is so What I found is, you know, uh, Rhoda, when you were saying that you were listening to, like, audio versions of um, the, the white paper originally, because that was the mm -hmm. best way for you to kind of consume information, I'm the same way. So I work 40 hours a week, so and so it was easier for me to listen to podcasts or audio books um, to get into kind of crypto in general. So that's what I do now during the week I, when I'm driving or commuting to work, I listen to podcasts and then, um, I'll do audio books, a couple books on Bitcoin that I've, you know, read or listened to. Um, so that's like the only way I can consume new information now cause I don't have time. Uh, but yeah, I mean, taking in any info outside of crypto is w whether it's political or whatever else is hard because this is such like a fast paced, you know, a week is like an eternity in crypto adjusted terms. So yeah, I noticed. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I actually just found a cool article on cryptonews.com that apparently South Korea political parties are turning to blockchain um, to start working towards their voting system. I guess there's advocates that are calling for the introduction of blockchain power voting in South Korea. So that's pretty neat. Yeah. Guess who's working mm -hmm. with them? Icon. The Icon Loop. Just saying, guys, I know everyone's like, oh, you, you talk about Icon. Icon crashed. It's like, what didn't crash? Like, mm -hmm. it's not just Icon. I mean, literally, there's no no crypto survived. Any crypto that like I think the one of the coins that did like the best was actually Binance. If you look at Binance over the past, yeah. past six months, it actually had a really good uh, trajectory. So probably Binance was one of the best picks. But other than that, everybody just got wrecked. So, but I've actually started to accumulate. I don't know about you guys. I started uh, picking up more Elastos. I, I picked up a little more Icon. Actually, Vite is a new project that I think is has a very, very, very low market cap. It's only about 10 million right now. So that's one that I'm looking at. Um, yeah, that's really it right now. Still holding my Bitcoin though, because you got to hold Bitcoin. So yeah, my portfolio is like, now it's gone down because I've used my Bitcoin for other stuff. But it's like 18% Bitcoin, I think right now. Hmm. It's tough because Bitcoin's boring. People don't get the massive gains, but then you also don't get those massive losses too. So if you kind of hedge against it, I mean, so you you in the UK, you can get involved in ICOs. Have you have you bought any ICOs? Have you ever bought one? What was your experience with it? Did it was it good? Or? Um, I'm not invested in it. As so, so unfortunate. Answered that question. Sorry. I was just curious Sorry? to see how they've been going for people that have invested in ICOs. Mm. Personally, you know, I have don't. you done any ICOs, Rada? Uh, yeah, me and my partner have done some. Um, yeah, I've, have you had okay, good success with them? Been, um, <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tell you the, the, the last one. Actually, the last one, um, uh, you don't have to name it if you don't want to. Yeah, it was, it yeah, the, the last one we did was kind of recently, and um, it was in one of the net five ones um so kind of giving hints there um it it hasn't done as well as we were expecting it to so but um we're, we're still waiting 
Well, lot, but here's here's the biggest issue too. If you notice, a lot of these uh, uh, investments, the ICOs take Ethereum. They take Ether. Mm -hmm. Well, Ether fell from 500 to 250 in the course of almost a week. It halved in price. So right there, by default, if you're buying a certain amount of tokens for Ether at 500, and now Ether drop, right? You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. that alone, yeah. The Ethereum thing, man. Well, the only Ethereum's ICO I, I participated in was the Kin ICO, and I was pretty excited about that. But it's been, I mean, it dropped way below the ICO price, and then basically everybody sold. But actually, more recently, they just released their, there's an app now that you can, like, take surveys and do, like, daily stuff and earn Kin and then buy gift cards with that, which is pretty. Is that Kin it? Kin it, yeah. I just downloaded it the other day, and I've been using it. Um, so, I mean, it didn't do, you know, it didn't go... 10x like everything else and i didn't sell i still hold all the original but i just felt like it was like the only one that the u.s could participate in so i was like screw it i'm gonna do it i mean that's my thought process right go just do it everyone in, the <laughs> <laughs> everyone in my live stream keeps telling me to report <laughs> they're basically telling me what the hell am i doing on this live stream i'm essentially like the ugliest person so we need to get another <laughs> We need to get another woman in here. What, I, I don't belong on this live stream. I don't know. I just figured I would just talk to different people. I'm not trying. I didn't do it to be like, oh, hey, you know. No, I think it's great. I mean, it, we, we like, have a tendency to stream with the same people anyways because it's easier to just chat with somebody that you've already chatted with. But it's important to bring on other people that are good and different and have a different point of view. And you guys are, you know, like I said, the other side of the pond. So you definitely have uh, a view on things that we don't have over here, which I think is really cool. But going back to ICOs, I think we, when we, we invest in ICOs, we choose projects that we really believe in. We're not investing to flip it. So um, I think there's a difference where um, we actually are true believers in it and we're in it for the long haul, if that makes sense. So that's the way to, I mean, ultimately, that's the smarter way to go about doing it. Because if you're in a bear market like we are now, if you invest in an ICO on fundamentals, not with the intention of 10xing, you're gonna have a yeah. better time in the long run uh, if that's kind of the way you the way you feel. Somebody's yelling, uh, Kyle, for you to wear a wig. Somebody told me to put a paper bag on too. Thank you. <laughs> appreciate it. Appreciate all the nice comments on, on my channel, guys. I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> but you know, though, getting back on that topic of investing in things that you believe in and what. Thank you, Eduardo. I appreciate. It. He says I'm pretty. Thank you. So they. <laughs> One of the things that really bothered me, like when I went to consensus, I really got, you know, cause I do love the tech. Of course I want to make money. I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I don't, I'd be lying to say that I don't care about anything but tech. But the thing is, is like when I went there, the problem was, is like you go to this event and it's designed for networking and meeting people. And the problem was, is that every single person that came up to me was more concerned about what could be done for them instead of what they can do for me. And I found that to be really selfish. Like it was a bunch of guys, I mean, I don't know, I didn't really know who these people were. They kind of came out of the woodworks. It's all, everybody's wearing business suits and it's all about like, well, I'm gonna invest in this and flip this and how can you make me rich in this? And I was like, you know, maybe that's why everything crashed after consensus because it was a really depressing eye-opening fact that all these retail people that came in later, they're only concerned about money. And inevitably, if you're only, if all you're concerned about is greed, the greed is going to tear it down. And I think yeah, that's you're exactly cut what your it losses is. and sell yeah. out. So that's actually a very good point, Kyle. I didn't think that about that, but yeah, I mean, fundamentally, if you start really breaking down conversations with people, you'll find out what their priorities are. And most of the time it's usually, you know, finance based, which is, fine and whatever but this market you know we're, it's a little small for everybody to just be selling and getting out of it because the prices aren't great so fundamentals right. are important mm -hmm. yeah like these emails that you get you know from these random ico projects and literally the first thing that it says is like sponsored paid ico with like exclamation points and it's just like that's the that's how you're going to introduce yourself to me <laughs> yeah you know, and like even you go on these like these websites for these new ICOs, and honestly, if I click on a website and the first thing I see is the token sale, I'm out. That should be the last thing. That should not be. I mean, the token sale should be the most difficult part of your website to find. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I should have information mm. on the front page. So yeah. sometimes you can just tell just by looking at these projects, like which ones are the cash grabs. And unfortunately, it, it has become ridiculously easy for people that have absolutely nothing but a white paper to raise millions of dollars, which in traditional if you have an IPO, you know, you have to be established for that, you know, and yeah. that's my problem as well. That's my little bugbear as well. And I really love the fact that you guys are doing this token tank thing because we kind of needed it in this space. I love the idea that I think I respect any project or any CEO who agrees to go on your token tank and just be asked, you know, really put on the spot and grilled because mm -hmm. the simplest way I could 
break break down the whole ICO process, um, how it should be when it comes to asking for an investment was like the shark's tank or in the UK, we call it the dragon's den. Like you think of, you're, you're gonna ask for money, you go to the dragon's den or the shark's tank and you go, you go with an idea, you go not just with an idea and a white paper, say, oh, this is, this is my idea and this is my white paper. They, no, they get grilled, they really get grilled. They, get, they, they have to show a minimal, minimal viable product, they have to show records, they have to show projections, they have to, you know, they, ask, they get asked if they're in debt, you know, how much of their profits are going in debt. They, they, they get asked so many questions and there isn't enough of that in this space. So I think your, your token tank is a really good step towards something like that. Well, that's the thing that's different too, is like, we don't prep the questions, you know, like it's not sponsored, they don't pay for it and they don't yeah. know what we're gonna ask them. That's but, brilliant. You know, like I've done interviews where, I understand if there's a language barrier, that's understandable, you need to prep because I've had some that mm -hmm. they just don't speak English that well. But yeah. some people mm -hmm. will be like, no, like, let me revise that. I would, I don't want to answer that. You know, and it's just like, now you're not doing an interview. Now you're basically doing like a shill. You're, you you want to come on my channel to like literally just shill your project. You're not realistic. You're not talking about problems. You're not talking about concerns. And that really like pisses me off personally. And that's why I'm really selective with the people that I speak with, you know, especially if they're trying to tell me like, you know, we're going to provide you with the list of questions. It's like, that's not an interview. That's hmm. program. It's designed. It's like a script, you know? And yeah. I just think there's that people don't need that. I think people need more transparency. Actually, a couple people over here have been asking about Hedera. Um, uh, Ale Alex, you were in the, the token tank as well. Did I mean, I kind of gave my opinion on it. Does everybody, do you guys have an opinion on Hedera? Some people think it's too centralized and they don't like the fact that it was kept completely private. I mean, I, I said that, I think I said this at the end of the video, but my thought on it is that you know, okay, so yeah, cryptocurrency was born out of a want and need for decentralization for a hands-off approach, and that's fine. And there's thousands of projects that are trying to do that. And I think that Hedera is pretty much focused on an enterprise solution for transactions per second and for speed and for viability within a corporate setting. I think that there's a space for everything. They're very honest about the fact that they're not necessarily planning to be a public chain. And a lot of the reason that their transaction per second are so quick is because the nodes are more controlled and things like that. So I don't, I mean, if you're looking at Hedera and you're comparing it to Bitcoin, you're doing it wrong. It's like apples and oranges. So I think what it's doing, the goal it's trying to, to you know, succeed with is fine. Um, it's not a public sale. Yeah, that was kind of crummy. And But also, I don't think they necessarily want the general public in it if it's an enterprise solution. So to each their own. There's a space for everything. It doesn't, everything doesn't it, have to be decentralized and Bitcoin like. But Alex, isn't it, isn't it ironic though, that you, you have people hating on Hedera because of what they're doing with the, what was it? 50, what was it? 51 nodes. I don't even remember something. 59, I think 59 or something. And then you have EOS with the 21 block producers, but you have EOS doing a year long ICO where literally anyone could participate in the whole world for a year long. And everyone's like, screw that. That sucked. That's a stupid yep. model. They waste too much money. And then you have Hedera doing the absolute opposite. I'm saying, screw that. That's not fair. I couldn't I get in. It's like, well, what, what just are you about gonna, to like get into an argument with somebody on the chat because somebody just said to me, don't you think it's um, irresponsible of you guys to promote Hedera with how they handled their token sale? And I wanted to say no, because uh, there's people all over YouTube promoting EOS, which had a year long public ICO and they don't even, they barely have a working product and it, their projects like falling through the cracks and they can't manage the centralization of their nodes. So no, I don't think it's, it's, again, there's a space for everything. And we're, we're as you said, Kyle, um, you know, there's always going to be an update and, and edits needed to a project. That's the reason why the iPhone gets push updates all the time from Apple, because mm -hmm. nothing is perfect. So we have to be patient and understand that, like, sometimes there's projects out there that aren't going to be for us and their purpose is something else entirely. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, it, we all have, like, yeah. this mindset that everything has to be decentralized. And blockchain is a tech that's good for a lot of use cases. They don't all have to be public. Yeah, it has yeah. great use cases right now. Mm. Like, like right now, like literally right now, you can use it for voting. You can use it for supply chain logistics. You can yeah. technically use it as a store of value and, and, a, and a way yeah. of P2P transfer. It has use cases, mm. you know? Mm -hmm. And I liked your recent video when you mentioned about charity as well, because that's something that's quite close to my heart. Um, being used in charity, like w w knowing where the money's going. Um, uh, I'm not going to name any names because I don't know who watches these videos that knows who I am personally, but you know, um, there are some 
charities that that we have had uh, in our community questionable of where what are these people doing because of the people that all of a sudden they have these charities right and then all of a sudden two weeks later they're taking a vacation in the bahamas and stuff like that and it's like wow that's really convenient that two weeks after the charity you guys are taking the kids going you know what i mean and it's just kind of like i really wish i could see where my money's going and that's why i'm skeptical that's why i don't good Hello? Oh, sorry. Did I've seen an frozen? article today. Oh. Uh, I don't know if you guys... Am I frozen? No, you're good. Yeah, for, for like a second, you're good now. <laughs> okay. Cool. Um, so do you guys have Lad Bible? Do you know what a Lad Bible is? The website? No. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so they basically made an article today uh, saying that there was a couple who raised £200,000 for a homeless person and they quit their jobs to do it and to give a guy a new start. And as soon as they finished, they ended up having two cars and going on five holidays. And the homeless guy only got 25K from it. So that's what that's what I mean. Like, that would never happen on blockchain. Like, th- there's just not a chance a scam like that would go through unless someone pulled some, I don't know, out-of-box moves. So, yeah, I totally agree that charity is a great help for blockchain. Yeah. Blockchain is a great help for charity the other way. Well, that's like, I, I forget what project I, I think it was request network where they were talking about how if you know um if they were used within like municipal um regulations like within a, a towns or whatever if they use mm. them for the money that they bring in on taxes and then we could show exactly where their taxes are going instead of there being dishonesty and like where the money is going actually in our government which i think is another great use case because mm-hmm. obviously with like all of the manipulation that we have and people buying other people off it's very easy for when you have that much money for greed to set in and for you to be dishonest, you know, it's especially if you don't think anybody's watching. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's the issue with the centralized systems is that we don't know where they're going and we don't know what they're doing. So those are just some of the solutions that blockchain could definitely help. Um, Actually, I wanted to ask you a question, Sarah, real quick, because you were talking about how you really, really like Neo. And we were talking earlier about the tech and I meant to ask this question, but I didn't want to interrupt. Um, Yes. So how do you feel about talking about, oh, there's all these bugs. I think, uh, I think Candor brought it up. She said there's bugs and there's all these issues and people, you know, they're losing their faith and stuff like that. So how do you feel about all this Neo FUD that's been going on recently? I mean, in one hand, people are like, oh, they keep finding all these issues. They forked. They weren't supposed to. Then a couple times you had issues with the node shutting down. You remember they got frozen on a few ICOs. But my question is, does that mean that Neo is like garbage and we should just throw it out? Or do you think that it's a good thing? I mean, I would rather find these bugs now than five years from now. I think finding bugs is the best thing that can happen to a project. It's like the uh, silver lining of a project because you find out, like we're in an early adoption now, like maybe a little bit later on. Uh, But basically if they find it now, I'd rather them find it now before they go onto Ethereum scale and they have that many projects being built and upon them rather than so they, they, i'm trying to get to the point that they just starting glad they're finding all those bugs because that means they can fix them i'll get worried when they won't be able to fix them and when the when the production of icos will be impossible upon them so i'm personally not worried about it i think they just as long as they sort it out they'll be fine and Ethereum's got some scalability issues as well so not a single uh, blockchain platform is safe from bugs that's just my take on it and uh while there, there was some project recently that had some loads of bugs and i was really happy about it I, I can't recall it now but there are projects who constantly find them and they don't repair them and that's when i lose faith into them that's the and thing yeah i mean finding out. them and repairing them finding them is the better part because if they're finding them that means that the team is actively yeah. trying to improve the project they're working on it that's a good thing um if they were sitting there saying there's nothing wrong with our project it's perfect that's like mcafee's uh wallet if anybody can and hack it, whatever, it's, it's unhackable. Instead of them trying to, because they probably didn't even test it, them trying to test it, improve it, and, and be able to show people the effort that they put in and forth in making it unhackable, but instead they promote it as such and lie to people about it. So I'd rather see transparency, humility. Okay, our project's not perfect. Here are our bugs. Here's mm-hmm. what we're fixing. And honestly, Neo's, like, their, their updates that they do on their actual website that they, you know, do monthly updates very thorough. I mean, they put mm. everything that they find that is wrong, everything that they're working on. And I would much rather that than them try to hide it. I mean, I think that's a pro. Yeah. And they're not open, to mention, they're really quick. 
No, they're really quick to, to jump in on it. Like Red for a sec, you know, Eric Zhang. I mean, name one time that Neo has an issue that not within a matter of literally hours, they're addressing it, working on it, fixing mm. it. Yeah. I mean, my partner put it to me in a really simple way to understand. Like he, he used the example of like our child, our baby, like they have, they come out into this world with no immunity like immune system and they pick up bugs and it's what makes them stronger, what makes them better. And I think it's the same thing with these, these projects that are coming into the space. Um, these bugs are actually helping. They're going to make the, make the project stronger. Yeah. And it's like, like Sarah said, as the, the earlier that it happens, the better. Oh, That's yeah. why I like these, these projects like uh, quant stamp and certic, certic, whatever they're calling themselves, because they're actually looking to look into the, you know, look into the bugs. They're trying to find them, and that's becoming something. You know, auditing these smart contracts. So mm -hmm. I think that's going to be a niche market of its own that people. That's going to be really important, personally. Oh, yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, this has uh, been a pretty fun, uh, pretty fun ride. I, I don't know. I mean, is there are there any questions from the chat? I mean, the chat got kind of quiet. Everybody was really asking a lot of questions. I think the whole market's got everybody kind of into like a bit of a mood right now. You yeah. know, we're all just kind of trying to figure out what we're doing, where we belong, and, and how to really benefit from this. I mean, it's it's funny because everyone keeps saying buy the dip and then it dips more, and <laughs> buy the dip and then it dips more. But you know, I mean, if you do look at Bitcoin, I'm not really good with with TA right now, so I'm I'm not going to pretend that I do technical analysis. I'm not going to pretend to be that guy. But if you do look at it, it's been going sideways for like quite some time now yeah. and in the past although it might not repeat itself i've noticed that it usually does something i hope it goes this way though but we'll see so i don't know thoughts I have on faith. Perlin and avalanche i think it's oh, gonna i think it's gonna explode it's just a matter of time and i mean i don't do ta and i'm just speaking from a gut feeling so you know do your own Mm -hmm. research don't trade on my advice whatever whatever but um no i mean based on last year you know when we saw the, the increase to almost 20k or whatever that you know that's that was just enthusiasm and that was a drop in a bucket compared to the amount of people that are still out there that are maybe debating on getting into crypto or haven't heard of it yet and i mean i think the future is going to be quite bright i just think that these pullbacks in this bear market is healthy it's it's got to happen yeah. it's unrealistic for us to Staking expect growth yeah, we can't have that kind of growth all the time. It's just not yeah. real. The interesting thing is if you don't just look at the price, you look at the volume, you'll see that the volume is growing, which means that there's more transactions happening. More people are actually using crypto, even though the prices are the lowest they've been, like, well, not the lowest they've been all year, but almost the lowest they've been. But the volume mm. is is way bigger than it used to be. Crypto Daily, you know? actually, I, I, I watched a video a couple of days ago and he said, um, he's like, yeah, you know, the the, the price isn't going anywhere, but if you look at like the actual volume trading over the last like two years, it's steadily increasing. So it's there, you know, the market's there. I made there. a tweet about the, I made a tweet about the, um, wah, about the volumes, trading volumes. And I said it before I found the tweet. Okay. So in 2014, an average daily volume was $15 million. In 2017, it was $2.2 .2 billion. And in 2019, we don't really know what's it going to be. So it's just going up, exactly. And volume means, speaks for itself, I think, louder than anything else can. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Because, I mean, price is just a reflection of whatever. Like, when you really think about it, all it is is the last price multiplied by how many coins. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's difficult to get. I mean, in reality, the scary thing actually about the market cap, I don't know how many people know this, but if everybody was to try to cash out at once, wouldn't be able to. The, um, the market cap mm -hmm. doesn't truly reflect how much money's actually in crypto. It's actually arguably inflated. I've heard people say up to even 50X of the actual amount of money you could take out at once, which is very interesting because you always have a buy and a sell, unless you're doing OTC. So inevitably, if you were going to cash out, you'd have to, it would, you know, I don't know, it would drive it down and blah, yada, 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 whatever. So, yeah, I mean, that's kind of, that's actually scary thinking that it's even lower than what we're looking at, because you look at how these guys are manipulating it right now. Hmm. Imagine if it was even lower than that. And that's the thing is like, the yeah. whole reason that I got into this whole decentralized stuff was because I wanted to get away from the banks. I wanted to get away from the centralization. And it seems like the more we keep selling our Bitcoin cheap to these guys on the other end, and we don't know who they are, we're giving that power back to them. And they're just going to, the same problems that we have in the real world, yeah. we're going to have in crypto if we don't start taking back the power ourselves, you know? And that's why everyone needs to hold a little bit of Bitcoin, not financial advice, but just hold some, stop giving it away to these <laughs> people, you know? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely, for sure. 
So is there anything else? We've been going for about an hour. I've really appreciated this. I actually have to, I'm going to New York City. I don't know if you guys know Jeff from Quantalysis. He's getting married Ooh. and he's having a bachelor party. So I'm going to go see Jeff in the city tonight. I'm going to go so. look at hot air balloons. So that's my plan for this evening. <laughs> Oh, All right. going to bed. <laughs> there you go. No, yeah, I mean, I don't have any questions. I don't, if you guys have anything else to add, otherwise I'm pretty much good on my end. Cool. I can't think I of anything so far. No. <laughs> well, I, I'll, I'll say something. Definitely, uh, you know, uh, you know, wrote, wrote a new channel, just got into crypto. Everybody, please go support her. I, I appreciate her content. I think it's really good. So check it out. And, you know, the links in the description, go follow everybody. We're all a happy crypto family here. So there you go. Thank, yeah. thank you. Thanks for that. Event. Absolutely. <laughs> and obviously to everybody that came out in the chat, obviously I love you guys. You're awesome. Um, we had some kind of funny, funny comments in the chat today, but I know you guys are just playing around. So still, a, still a pleasure and an honor to have everybody on. So thanks everybody. Really, really awesome. I, I'd love to do something like this again at some point. So. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. You should, you should girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. There everyone you go. Have a great night. All right. Bye. Talk to you later. Bye guys. Bye, oh, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.